Hello and welcome to the Sands of Time Review Channel. It is your host, Sammy Thunder, back at it once again with another episode of Watch Express. As you can probably see on my screen, I'm going to be talking Grand Seiko, some of the newest releases uh, for, for the brand. And I think this here, you know, the Grand Seiko uh, 55th Anniversary Limited Edition, the SBGW289 is an excellent is an excellent offering from the brand um, is a very unique offering from the brand and is something that we see for the first time is the 44 GS uh, in a much smaller diameter um, so first impressions a lot of people are gonna think yes this is probably a female watch and all be albeit that you know it probably is catered to the female audience but I can see a lot of uh, male uh, people uh, just just wearing this watch here and you know this is a 44 GS case watch that features a manual wind caliber and you can probably think why is because they want to reduce that thickness um, and they give you a domed boxed sapphire crystal first time i'm seeing this on a 44 gs uh, watch so this is this is very unique um you know and that looks like a very very big dome which it, it kind of reminds me of the dome i'd see on a a doxa uh, sub 300 um and, and this this is what that watch this watch here kind of reminds me with that crystal but obviously with that elegance of the 44 gs case the contemporary design that you'd get and you know this is a limited edition of four 1200 pieces um with reference sbgw289 with a australian represented retail price of seven thousand nine hundred and fifty australian dollars um and this what this is the watch right here and as you can see it features a pink textured dial that's you know it's kind of based on the sakura you know the sakura, uh, sakura flowers or the cherry blossoms it is very reminiscent of the uh grand seiko four seasons collection the spring but features a different textured dial and i believe a little bit more pinkiness or pink uh to the dial um you know and and that's what we get here with the um sbgw 289 um and as you can see here, you have the Grand Seiko logo, and you can see here this is m more of a rose gold logo uh, compared to, you know, let's say using the gold. So they've, they've, they've put in a lot of thought there. They haven't put any text underneath here, which is, you know, it, it really is a clean dial like a lot of the um, manual one calibers don't really have that text. Um, and then you have a unique set of hands. Um, as you can see you have a brushed center portion and I believe the sides could either be brushed or polished but the point is you have three facetings three facets per hand and the indices itself are the same as what you would get on let's say an SBG A375 which is a spring drive variant of the 44GS um, so you know it, it it is very nice it is a excellent watch you know featuring you know a, a diameter of 36.5 so the case diameter of 36.5 i would say the diameter would be here to here and you'd feature a lug to lug distance of 42.7 to close to 43 um so it it is a smaller lug to lug for me um i think 44 lug to lug is borderline but with a bracelet um uh you know because you still see that extended part of the steel you know it really wouldn't matter to me i would gladly rock one of these on i think uh the, these are just great looking watches um so even the shorter lug to lug it doesn't bother me as a male audience um but obviously if you have an eight inch wrist or something it's gonna look pretty minuscule i i comfortably wear the spga 375 which has around a 45 lug to lug distance and that that to me is the sweet spot so this here is a, a couple of mils shorter um but i mean what you're getting here is extremely thin watch at 11.6 mils thin and you got to understand that this is including this very high domed glass crystal box sapphire crystal um so like in reality you know your perceived thickness is probably less than 10, 10 mils thick uh you know that domed crystal i've got to see in person but probably makes a lot makes a small portion of that thickness um, and obviously this watch here features a hundred meters of water res resistance and a screw down crown um which is just excellent and looking at the case back they decided to go with the closed case back um i'm not sure you know if you know they probably could have gone with an open case back but 
maybe Grant Seiko were thinking about, oh, how do we maybe just minimize that thickness? Um, but I do think the manual one caliber and automatic calibers in general are actually beautiful and hence should be seen. Uh, but in this case, you know, we still have a nice case back. We have a brushed case back with the Grand Seiko Lion Medallion limited edition with the number there. I still think this is nice, albeit. Um, but for me personally, I would have preferred a open case back just to see that beautiful manual wine movement would have just made this watch excellent for me. Uh, I think they could have could have done so, but uh, look, there could be movement uh, restriction. Maybe the movement would look. I mean, the movement fits perfectly within the watch. It. I uh, so I think with the thirty six point five mils of uh, diameter, I think we would be able to see. You know an excellent large movement there so i think it is a little bit of a missed opportunity but look if there was a a limitation there i can actually understand that um and obviously you know these press images don't, probably don't even do this dial justice obviously um and then you have the zaratsu finishing which is just you know on the 44 gs case you know to me that's their most iconic case you know multiple facets on the case very complex case a lot of uh hand craftsmanship has gone into this kind of watch and you're getting it for 7950 retail price which is just you know uh really is you know when you look at it like that a bargain um so yeah i think this watch is great um 964 movement which is the manual wind which features the 72 hour power reserve and maintains a 28,800 beats per hour. I mean, um, the movement itself is excellent. You know, uh, parts of this movement are actually developed within or manufactured within a MEMS laboratory, um, which is, you know, technique you would use for nano fabrication uh, in a clean room. But, you know, Grand Seiko have taken it to that such high level. Um, they do that in house as well. Um, and that here is the SBG W289. And I'm going to go through two other non-limited edition manual wind movements that were released a couple of weeks ago and that is the SBG W283. Um, the SBG W283 and the SBG W285 which are manual wind movements, I mean manual wind watches that are based off the SBG W231. I think this watch here is stunning already with the clean cream dial um, and it's dubbed as the Seiko Trava because and that's such a high praise uh for for a kind of watch like that you know when you're compared to the patek philippe calatrava um you know that 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 you know patek probably you know hands down one of the best uh manufacturers for dress watches and to be compared to patek philippe you know especially this watch here is a huge huge you know appreciation for the watch um it's so clean no date caliber just the logo there, Grand Seiko, with applied GS there, clean. Um, short lug to lug, 44.3 mils, 11.6 um, mils in thickness, features a domed uh, box sapphire crystal, 37 mils in diameter, um, and also features the same movement, the 9S64 manual wine caliber. And that's exactly what you're getting here, except you're getting a much more luscious style. You're getting... Uh, something that's dubbed as the the Kishun, the first days of summer. Um, and you do get a textured, a nice light blue textured dial. I think it looks fabulous. And obviously in person, it, it's going to, you know, stock images really won't do any of this justice. Um, you really want to go to the Grand Seiko Boutique, have a look at it. And I think what these watches kind of do is they take the SPG W231, for the audience that probably think it's a bit too boring or plain for them even though i do appreciate the simplicity and the cream dial and it takes it to the next level and they're telling the audience hey why don't you buy this watch now we're going to give you a very very uh beautiful dial that you can look at um and and that's what you know it's just pushed to the next level and as you can see there is that price hike, seven thousand one hundred and fifty to uh, six thousand three hundred Australian dollars. So we're bumped up by a thousand dollars. And let's uh, take a look here. We do get these straps. I'm not sure if they come with this deployment because you know then I can actually understand a little bit of that price hike because they are giving you the deployment uh, buckle, um, but normally they just give you the tang clasp uh, with the SBG W two three one. But obviously, got to see that. So, 
I mean, that's what you're getting here. Blue dial, choice of strap. Um, if you buy from the boutique, I believe. If you don't, you probably will just get this stock strap here, which is just obviously extremely high quality. Grand Seiko Crocodile is just phenomenal. And likewise, we have the SBG W285, a beautiful metallic textured green dial. You can see that there's a bit of sunburst going on there. And then you have the textured dial and that green strap is absolutely gorgeous. Um, beautiful. I mean, it's nicknamed the Bjorka. Um, you got the green dial. Um, just likewise, I want to reticulate the same points made for the other two watches. Um, what you are getting is just a unique dial. You have two different options. You have a blue or a green, which you can go for. Fairly affordable watches that are compared to this to the Patek Philippe Calatrava that are just taken to the next level. Um, I am honestly considering one of these as well because of how beautiful they are. A beautiful dress watch. Um, you cannot go wrong with Grand Seiko. And that's, that's my last statement there. I think these are just phenomenal releases. So I'll end it here. Thanks for watching. It is the Sands of Time Review channel. Please like and subscribe. And let me know what you think of these new releases. Let me know if you're going to pick one up. Um, just let me know your thoughts in general. Thank you. Bye.